Well, Tanana Reeve, welcome. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad to be here. All right. So I'm talking to you on the occasion of, uh, has it happened as a reissue of your very first book? Has that already been reissued or is it going to be reissued? My first novel, The Between, will be reissued in October. In October. Okay. Yes. Oh, a spooky month. The correct month. There for it is. It. Okay. Halloween. Okay. Watch okay. out. And so that was your first book. I want to come to that. I want to back way up. I want to go back further. I want little Tanana Reeve, who, if I had to lay down a big bet, read a lot when she was a girl. Is that true? True. I, I, I read so much like this that uh, <laughs> my teeth curve in. Uh, and, and I used to sneak and read back in the day when you had the landlines. I oh, yes. Sneak- to read under my covers by the light of the keypad. So that's how desperate I was wow. and to what? read after bedtime. Wow. Okay. All right. So you're reading along, but like a lot of people, uh, you know, did you try your hand at it pretty early or were you just exclusively reading it? I absolutely tried my hand at it early. So that's the good sign that I was a reader from a young age, because when I was four, mm. I folded a bunch of typing paper in half to create a book, which is everyone knows, that's how you create a book. Yeah, yeah. And I wrote a cover, cover art. It was wow. called Baby Bobby, <laughs> you know, and it was a bunch of stick figure drawings. And then the last page I wrote, Baby Bobby is a book about a baby. And I didn't know how to spell baby. So I spelled it B-A-B-B-Y. So you don't think I was like some kind of super prodigy, <laughs> pro- prodigy. but prodigy lord but then at the end i wrote uh like the last liner note was the author and i also spelled author wrong but i said the author is tanana reeve do so i really feel like from the age of four i was kind of declaring i knew what i wanted to do i'm a writer i'm an author in fact it was a real advantage because having that clarity and knowing what i wanted to do helped me make decisions all through my school career so by the time i got to high school i stopped taking band right i stopped taking piano lessons like all that stuff i was doing extracurricularly you know sort of i was like no i want to focus it all on trying to be a writer i figured it was going to be tough right all right so now eventually the in between now the between yes the between the between yes the in between i'm thinking of stranger things uh, right. the between so So uh, this is your first novel, first published novel. I suspect not your first written novel, although- You know, that's right. I I had many false starts before I got to this one. Yeah. And so um, how old were you? What were you doing? What was happening in your life when you you wrote that? I would would put my age as my late 20s. I'm I'm not good at math, and I don't know that I would want to share it anyway, but it was (laughs) in my late 20s. I was working as a journalist for the Miami Herald because that had been my sort of safety degree. I got a a journalism degree from Northwestern University back when journalism was considered a steady field. Yeah, That was the thing that you do so that I could support myself as a writer. So I, I had been working on short stories after work and hadn't had much luck. I, I got one magazine to say they were going to buy a short story, but then they went out of business before ah. they could publish it. So it was really frustrating. I had not published a thing right. when I started working on The Between and the way it came about, you know, and, and I should say as an aside that a lot of those short stories I was writing had white protagonists. And I think the reason oh. it's important to note that is that when I was younger, you know, as a child, I was writing stories like about a little black girl trying to get sure. in the Book of World Records. And, and right. most of my characters, I would say, were black. But right. then as I proceeded through school, through undergraduate, through graduate school, and I got more exposed to what's called the canon, <laughs> I started to kind of unconsciously write myself out of my stories. I was yeah. writing about white men. Uh, oh. in fact, that story- <laughs> you went all the way. You right, went all right. the way into the canon. <laughs> that that one story I had sold was from the point of view of a white male screenwriter okay. living in the UK. I was none of those things. Okay, right. I was not right. a white male. I didn't live in. I, I had gone to graduate school in the UK, so that's where that came from. But I was just trying to sort of. Uh, oh my gosh, the writer's name has just slipped out of my mind. Ian McEwen. I was trying to imitate ah, Ian McEwen. Okay. With so that you admired story. his work. And yeah, so, he was writing really edgy kind of weird short stories yeah, at that yeah. time. And I was just trying to write a weird short story like Ian McEwen. So by the time I came to The Between, that's I'm telling you that long aside to get yeah. back to my first novel, 
1992, there was a horrific hurricane that devastated much of South Florida called Hurricane Andrew. Oh, yeah. My mother's yeah. house in shambles, my grandmother, my aunt, uh, all these houses, like mile after mile, trees knocked over. It looked like a, a war zone. So that's how this sort of alternate reality theme became a part of the between. And also I'd had um, a relationship not work out. So I was sort of in this kind of misery. I was just losing grasp of my world. And I came up with this idea of what if there was a, now this time it was a black male. So I was writing okay, uh, at least a, a black little closer. Okay. <laughs> what if there was a black man, suburban like me, you know, a lot of the right. black writers I admired were writing either rural fiction or very urban fiction. Right. And that had not been my experience. There was no sort of, suburban fiction by black writers show yeah. so yeah. i i just sort of went out on faith and said well what if i write about a family that's a lot like our family like you integrated a new neighborhood the neighbors don't like you you're getting threats this kind of thing and i i saw a contest for screenwriting that said they would accept novels so i i gave myself a deadline and i mentioned that because that's really really important in terms of why i wrote this book I actually had a deadline rather than just sort of casting oh. around and writing when I felt like it, I became serious. That was when I think I actually became a professional level writer, even oh, if the between hadn't been a publishable novel. And it did sit in a drawer for nine months before I knew that it was yeah. I just, you know, but anyway, yep. Um, yep. I developed the writer's routine. I got up early, which for me would be eight in the morning like right between eight and nine 30 <laughs> run to work by 10 as a journalist. Right. We didn't have to get there till 10. You basically work 10 to seven, That's but I, good. I was single and I, and, and I only had like a cat or whatever. So right. I, I really let go of hanging out with my friends after work. I used to go rollerblading up and down ocean drive. I just cut out TV. My cable got cut off. I barely noticed it. I was really <laughs> nose to the grindstone and I wrote this book oh. in nine months. All right. And so you finished it and, did you feel like, could you feel the breakthrough in yourself? Could you feel something allowed through? You know, the difference between, because I know for myself, when I've allowed my voice to be authentic and when I've kind of tried to noodle with it to get it to be something that I thought it should be, I could tell the difference. Could you tell the difference? Um, I wanted to believe in it, but I had some uncertainties. You know, at yeah. that time, I had never read any speculative fiction by another Black writer, first of all. So maybe it's so not possible. I didn't Maybe. know if there was yeah. a, I didn't know if it was any good, which is always what we wrestle right. with. And B, right. I didn't know if there was a market for it. So while right. I was writing it, I had written a letter to my sisters. Like, do you think there could be a, a market for a black <laughs> horror novel? I didn't know. Yeah. And, and that's how it ended up sitting in a drawer for nine months right. because I kind of went for the stars. I went for a huge agency yeah. through a friend of mine at the Miami Herald who was a, a, a novelist and he sent it to his agent who was at ICM, like this huge, wow. huge agency. Wow. And they rejected it. So on the basis of this one rejection, I stuck it in a drawer and didn't try to submit it anywhere else for nine months. I started wow. working on My Soul to Keep and I was probably about midway through My Soul to Keep. I really just thought maybe it was another practice manuscript. Right. Yeah, I had had many, many practice manuscripts. Sure. And there was no light bulb that went off that said, this is the one, right. this is the one that's going to sell because otherwise I would have tried harder to sell it. I just thought, oh, I'm not ready. And I didn't win the contest. So between that and not getting the agent, I thought, oh, okay, I'm not ready. Let me work on this one. Maybe this one will be yeah. good enough. And some part of my unconscious knew that was a bunch of BS, <laughs> that I was hiding from rejection because yeah. the first two had stung. Yep. And despite my 11th grade English teacher, Mrs. Estever, give her a shout out, who told me that in order to be a writer, I had to wallpaper my wall with rejection slips. So I did. I stuck a bunch of rejection slips on the wall. Literally, I was like, oh, you did. And I was getting rejected by the best story magazine, yeah. Playboy yeah. magazine. This was a, for oh. short fiction. Yeah. Um, I realized I wasn't doing everything I could to be a writer. I was writing every day. That's what they say you're supposed to do. I had developed the writer's routine, but I had not developed the writer's tough skin that yeah. you need to to submit your work. And I swear to you, when I realized what I had done, I looked up the the name of a woman local who worked for an agency called Marie Brown uh, and Associates. Her name is Janelle Ajiman. She sold the between within two weeks. Huh. 
within it was like oh boom. my god yeah it was just ready and i didn't know it was ready and by the way she sold it for more than my annual salary what as a newspaper reporter are you serious my very first advance my very first advance it was just it, i felt like my character in the between that i had i was waking up in a world that was not the world i had gone to sleep that's in. amazing wow yeah wow Ooh, that's yeah, no, it was crazy. That's that a crazy. Was- that's a crazy story. But you see, you know, it's so beautiful. Like you were sitting on this gold. You were literally like, you took gold and you stuck it in your drawer. And said, I didn't know. I'm not. But how can you know? I how didn't. can you know until you know? Uh, I have one more question. Sure. And I, what I want you to do is, this is my favorite question. I want you to finish this sentence. Uh oh. <laughs> if you can okay. do it, if all the writing you have done in your life has taught you anything. It's taught you what? You know, the first word that came to mind before you had even finished was oh, patience. Yeah. Patience. Yeah. Um, you need patience with yourself, first of all, because a lot of new writers get discouraged because their first drafts don't look like their favorite novelists. And they don't realize that their favorite novelist first drafts don't look like their favorite novelists either. You know, it's like it takes work. It takes time. Writing is rewriting. So there's that part, Uh, the patience of waiting to hear, oh my God, from an agent, from an editor, I I hear horror stories, uh, especially now post pandemic, they're just uh, not post in the pandemic, there seem to be delays built into the industry where it, it takes even longer. But I even in my day, I waited a year to get a rejection from story, you know, it's like, you need patience. Um, and also patience with the marketplace, because, yeah, it's not going to jump off on the New York Times bestseller list immediately or first time in or maybe ever. So you have to sort of know your reasons for wanting to write that are separate from fame and fortune, because I do not recommend that anybody go into especially prose writing because they think it's a path to fame and fortune. Can it be? Absolutely. We're surrounded by examples of those writers who have been able to do that. But even to make a living as a writer is so difficult. Um, And when you graduate with your MFA, no one is guaranteeing you a job anywhere. It's not like a law degree where you can like go and, you know, get recruited. Right. So, (laughs) so have reasons that are your own and be willing and to wait for everything else.